Hello, welcome back to Mountain Living. I am going to show you how I make peanut butter cookies. I talked about in a previous video how I modified the recipe several times over the course of an entire batch of cookies, which ended up being about three dozen. So this time I thought I'd actually show you how I make the cookies from start to finish. I still have, as of the making of this video and probably as of the actual production and release of this video, still have floating around on my computer a really long video of me making some bread. I was hoping to do little segments of normal speed and then interspersed with a whole lot of time lapse because the overall time frame we're looking at is about five and a half hours. I don't think anybody wants to sit through five and a half hours of watching the oven bake bread. It's not all that, but still, um, I'm hoping to be able to edit the video a little bit better than I currently am able to, but until I figure out what to do with what I'm capable of doing, I am just sitting on top of that thing. So hopefully I'll release the, the bread video at some point, but now I'll re release a much better, more succinct <laughs> video of me making peanut butter cookies. So start with the ingredients. I obviously do not have ingredients laid out in front of me, but oh hi ingredients that's the magic of television or youtube or any video type thing so what we have here are the ingredients namely <clears throat> two cups of butter which i'm actually going to alter and cut down by a third or so so i'll have two cups sorry two thirds cups of butter i'll have a half a cup of peanut butter Half a cup of sugar, half a cup of brown sugar. Oh my gosh. <clears throat> one egg, one and a quarter cup of flour, half a teaspoon of baking powder, quarter teaspoon of salt, three quarters teaspoons of baking soda, half a teaspoon of vanilla. So what we're gonna do first is cream the butter and the peanut butter and the two different types of sugars. Okay, so. Going to But wait you'll say, aren't you gonna put the butter inside of the mixing bowl? To which I reply, I'm the expert here. Come on. And then we're gonna put the peanut butter inside the bowl. So two cookies are sitting in the oven. One turns to the other, says, man, it sure is hot in here. Other turns back and says, holy cow, a talking cookie. Okay, so I creamed the sugars and the two different types of butter, the peanut butter and the normal cow milk butter. So that's all done. And now I have just added, added the uh, beaten up egg and the other liquid ingredient, which was the vanilla extract. And so now that all the wet type ingredients have been added, I'm going to mix them all up like some nice and mixed. Then what I'm going to do is mix all the dry ingredients up together. I'm going to mix them all up together with the white ingredients. So this cookie walks up to this juice stand. The guy running the stand says, we don't serve food here which the poor cookie walks away dejectedly. Okay, it has now been thoroughly mixed and it's still mixing, I was just going crazy with it. But, you done? But now is a good point to start thinking of ahead of the things you have to do next. One of which is preheat the oven, the other of which is to prepare the cookie sheets. In my case, I like to use uh, parchment paper. I don't like to spray, uh, what's that stuff? Um, cooking spray, oil spray, whatever, onto the cookie sheets. I prefer to use parchment paper because it is amazing. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to cut up the, street, the, the sheets for that and preheat the oven. Alrighty, now the two baking sheets that I have, the cookie sheets that I have, are these two. The shiny one and the dark not so shiny one that can still get a bit of a glare though because it has a reflective surface. Anyway, the dark one tends to bake the cookies a little hotter it seems and so I'm thinking I might want to, if I only bake with this cookie sheet, lower the temperature a little bit and or cut back on the cooking time. 
since I'm cooking with this one and with this one, I'm not gonna vary the temperature. It'd be too much of a pain to try to do that. I'm just gonna load them both up with cookie dough and stick them in and cook them at the same temperature. But something I am gonna do is take them out at different times from the oven so that the cooking times for the, the cookies on each cookie sheet vary. And therefore, hopefully they aren't gonna be too overdone or too underdone on either sheet. So I'm gonna prepare these by putting the parchment paper on them. I already have the oven preheating to 375, which is the desired cooking temperature that I found out during my tests last time. Okay, I have my baking sheets ready. They are lined with the parchment paper so that the cookies will not stick to it as they bake. Now, something that I figured out last time as a good method for getting consistent amount of cookie dough in each cookie since I don't have a melon baller or an ice cream scoop or a cookie scoop or anything fancy like that, is that I just take my hemispherical one tablespoon measuring cup, or I guess it's not a cup, it's a spoon, and it's not quite a hemisphere. But anyway, it's rounded. And what I do is I take this and I mash it on the back of a measuring cup. This one happens to be a one quarter measuring cup, uh, but the dimensions work out pretty well such that See if I can show that against my apron. Eh? Eh? No, not really. Let's see if I can show that against my shirt. Anyway, just trust me that the dimensions work out well so that when you take when you take a scoop of cookie dough in here and you mash it against here, all the excess squirts out the sides, you can kind of rub it together, and then you're left with a nice even single tablespoon of dough. What I do, as I may have mentioned, is that I'm only using one... Okay, yet another mistake, and I think I actually have to go back and edit my video from last time, because I think I only used three quarters of a tablespoon of dough for the most updated and most correct and best version of the baking that I did last time. So, I have updated that with some messy glob of white out so hopefully that'll that'll dry at some point and I can kind of clean that up a little bit but getting back to what I was saying earlier about the measuring spoon and the measuring cup they fit well so I can measure out the appropriate quantity of dough that I want and then since I'm not quite using this full measure of dough I take a little pinch out and throw it back in the mixing bowl that beep tells me that the oven is preheated to 375, so I need to get going sheeting out all these cookies. I have to see if I can try to get a close-up of this, because this is exceptionally fun. Yeah, I'm out of focus, okay. Okay, so as I'm working with this dough, I'm noticing that it seems a little bit drier than last time, and I'm wondering if that's because the egg that I used is a little bit older. It's actually from the same dozen carton that I used last time uh, a few days ago, and I'm wondering if the added few days changed the egg consistency, the moisture content, something like that. Ooh. And that's the only culprit I can really think of at this point because the flour hasn't really changed much nothing else has really changed much so I think that must be the only thing that I can think of that may have done that so a little known fact is that in college not only did I major in biology and minor in biomedical sciences I also had a minor from the department of repetition department so you know you should never eat anything with raw egg in it <clears throat> Because there's a chance that it may contain salmonella, and you get salmonella poisoning, and you don't want that. That'd just be icky. Alrighty, so let's show how I make an entire ball of dough. I take a scoop, and it's going to be pretty uneven, but, you know, it needs to be a little overflowing from the spoon. 
then I mash that on the back of the measuring cup and I really wish I could get a better close-up of this because it is so fun seeing all the dough squish out but <clears throat> once all the dough has squished out around you get rid of the excess and then what you're left with is this little uh, not really hemisphere but you know dome of dough I found out last time that taking off a pinch or so was just about right and I roll it up and so since my measuring spoon is one tablespoon and I take out a pinch I'm left with about three quarters of a tablespoon of dough per dough ball which ends up being a cookie Alrighty, I've got all these plated out or sheeted out careful with your pronunciation there and so now I'm going to have to do the ever important fork pressing so a little bit of fork pressing this way and a little bit of fork pressing this way <clears throat> how about I get a close-up of that so we do a little bit of fork pressing this way left-handed oh boy and that way and I'm trying not to mush these down too much because because I found last time that if I flattened the cookies too much, then they'd just come out flat, oddly enough. Okay, big exciting moment. Gonna put the cookies in the oven. Let me see if I can get a close-up of this. I don't think I can unless I somehow do my little personal body cam jury rig thing again with my apron and I don't think it's gonna work. We'll give it a shot though. <clears throat> <clears throat> Okay, quick. Whew. Um, I got to see inside of my apron. And, you know, here's the outside of my apron just to complete the tour. Okay, so I just put the cookies over in the oven. That's the first couple dozen. One dozen per... One dozen. Um, that's one dozen per baking sheet. And so I've got two dozen going in there right now. What I'm going to do now is try to avail the time and continue to make dough balls uh, so that in less than six minutes now, when those two dozen are done cooking, then I'll be ready to just take them out. Actually, I'm going to leave them on the stovetop for a little bit, let them cool a bit and finish baking because they do bake a little bit after you take them out of the oven. Once they're done baking, cooling off a little, then I'll put them out on the cooling and drying racks out here on the countertop. And then once the baking sheets have cooled off themselves even some more, then I'll go ahead and take the dough balls that I've already rolled out and uh, be that much farther ahead uh, sheeting them out for the next round of two dozen cookies that I'm going to bake. They see me rolling. All right, we're coming up on the six minute mark. <clears throat> we have the dark cookie sheet on the left. And I don't think you can really tell very well on the camera what they look like, but in person, ooh, they're looking like they're almost getting to the point where I might want to take them out of the oven. Of course, the shiny cookie sheet cookies are also looking like that. That beeper means that we've hit the six minute mark. I'm thinking we are seeing more golding and more flattening on the left here. The left being the dark cookie sheet. So let me throw this on. Let me get these cookies out of here. 
plop them up top. I'm going to try to keep them away from that back burner because right on the underneath of the um, back burner in the middle, there is a vent that directly vents all the hot air from the oven up to the stovetop. But annoying beeping is my kitchen timer. Okay, so you may have noticed now that the cookies have already flattened somewhat since I've taken them out of the oven. I'm afraid that this other dozen is going to do the exact same thing when I take them out. Currently they look nice and plump and uh, almost perfect. Oh, there we go. You can see a little bit better when I get closer. You can see all these lovely stains on the inside of the oven door. Okay. Ignore the stains. Look at the cookies. Thinking we're just about where we want to be on those. Okay, so they are starting to lose height a little bit as well. Hopefully they don't pancake out too much, at least not as much as these on the dark sheet did. I'm thinking maybe should have been a little bit faster on the removal from the oven on this dark sheet. Because those are just flat out flat. And these are nice and plump. <clears throat> Alright, so with the removal of the first two dozen from the oven, going to continue on with the plan that I mentioned of letting those cool for just a little bit. And then put them out on the cooling racks and then let the baking sheets themselves cool some more and then start putting all these dough balls on there. And like I said, you want to kind of keep on top of your efficiency and make use of the time so you're not just sitting there doing nothing. Department of Repetition Department. Alrighty, I'm going to put the cookies, which are now pretty well cooled off and done baking, out on the cooling racks. I would like to have a little spatula or something like that to get under there and flip the cookies out, but the spatula I have is not very good and definitely not thin enough to get under there. So what I've mostly been doing is just kind of turning up a row. If they're stuck together, kind of folding them along the seam, breaking them apart. There we go. Oops. Keep just breaking them apart. So we have a dozen from the dark cookie sheet that are flat and flat. All right, now we have a dozen from the shiny cookie sheet. Oh, can't really see it that well. Shiny cookie sheet? Trust me, it's shiny and it's cookie sheet. And these cookies are looking a lot more plump and more cookie-like, which is a lot more appealing. So, um, you can kind of tell in the main camera footage that these are all kind of flat and these are a bit more plump. I'm hoping that that equates to being more moist and, you know, like just out of the oven type perfect cookie type situation on these cookies. I'm going to let these finish cooling a little bit and continue to roll out the dough in preparation for sheeting out the, the dough balls to put in the oven for the next batch. It's not looking like I'm going to have enough for a full two dozen, so I'm not going to be able to fill up both cookie sheets this, this next time. Alrighty, so now what I've got is one dozen plus two dough balls. So those are ready to be plated out, or sorry, sheeted out on the cookie sheets, which I will do 
momentarily if the cookie sheets are um, I almost said dry enough. I think they're quite dry, but cool is what I'm looking for. Cool enough. I need the cookie sheets to be cool. So, thinking I will use the silvery shiny cookie sheet for the full dozen. And then, I don't know if this is good thinking or not, but I'll go ahead and put the plain old two, the lone pair of dough balls on the, the dark cookie sheet. And we'll see how it goes. Yeah, so this lack of cohesion, this dryness, this whatever's going on is really uh, kind of irritating. And I'm getting these really big cracks on the sides of the cookies around the perimeter. And I'm hoping that that doesn't turn out to be a problem in the finished product up here. It's not looking like it's terrible. I didn't mash the cookies to the extent that they had these big old fissures sticking in from the sides. And so when we look around the, the cookies here, once they're all said and done, it doesn't look like that turned into a big problem. But just this, this lack of moisture, or this lack of cohesion, or whatever's going on, I'm thinking, like I said earlier, I'm thinking it's because of that egg that I used that's now a couple days older than the previous pair of eggs that I used in the um, full recipe a few days back. Department of Repetition Department. So we'll see what happens and see if this lack of dryness, lack of cohesion, whatever, has any kind of impact on the cookies. But that's just one more thing to keep in mind. The dough is influenced by the eggs you use, by the flour you use, by the sugar, and uh, simply put by all the ingredients that you use in there. They all weigh in on the final cookie product. Okay, for this round, I'm not even gonna try with the whole body cam and the, and the uh, apron thing. I'm just gonna throw these guys right in here. And I'm gonna have to be really careful to watch this dark pan. This time the dark cookie sheet is on the right hand side. And I'm wondering if it's even gonna go the whole six minutes before those two cookies start to get maybe a little overdone or burned or turned into just lumps of charcoal. So I'm gonna keep the light on this time in the oven and keep an eye on those. In the meantime, I'm gonna have a sip of my Lady Grey Earl. No, Lady Earl. Earl Lady Grey Lady type tea that's Earl Grey's Lady. <laughs> tea, that's good. Ah, uh, it's gotten a little cold. All right, we just passed three minutes of baking time. These are the two cookies that are on the dark baking sheet on the right. And you can't really tell the color in the video very well, but then here's the full dozen on the shinier silver colored cookie sheet on the left. All of them are coming along pretty nicely. I'm still watching these two over here like a hawk. So like I said, I don't know if they'll make it to the full six minutes this time. Okay, even though I'm about, well, 30 seconds shy of six minutes. Oh, I'm thinking I wanna take these two cookies out of here. Maybe that will keep them from being all flat. Thinking particularly on this thicker, darker cookie sheet that I put them on, they'll probably do even more baking on the outside of the oven than the average cookie would. So I'll continue to keep an eye on those, see how they turn out. That beep is the end of the six minute mark. So I'll throw up an additional 30 seconds for the full dozen cookies that are on this shiny cookie sheet. All right, we are at the 30 minute, sorry, 30 second mark for a total of six minutes, 30 seconds for these guys. Now for a close up of these guys. Ooh, there's a little bit more light. Okay, these are looking nice and plump and 
like homemade cookies right out of the oven. So I'm happy with how they look. Thinking just a touch more baking, which is going to happen as they continue to cool off just a little bit outside the oven here. Just that little extra baking will be perfect. These cookies over here on the dark cookie sheet, trying to show you that it's dark. There you go. Um, these are starting, start, start, starting, starting. These are starting to flatten out. So that's a bit disappointing. I'm thinking that, as I may have mentioned in the video earlier, the cooking temperature is going to have to be reduced uh, for this cooking sheet. Go ahead and turn off the oven here before we forget. Turn off the oven light before I forget. Alrighty. <clears throat> so a moment ago, I cleaned off this countertop space, which you always want to do when you're dealing with raw eggs and just, you know, cooking in general. Make, uh, make sure you have a clean surface to work on. I'm surveying these cookies. These on the left, which are on your right, are the ones that were from the dark cookie sheet. They're flat, just as they were when they started. These on my right, your left are the more plump ones that were from the, the shiny uh, cookie sheet. So I'm going to get these off. Um, yeah, I'm thinking they're done cooling off. They're pretty much room temperature at this point. So I'm going to get these off of the cooling sheets and put them on to, let's see. Um, I guess I'll just put them on a plate. Or better yet, I'll put them in a sealable plastic container. Okay, I have to try them. Yeah, so that flat one's about as flat and crunchy and overly dry as I would expect. It doesn't seem particularly overcooked, aside from just being too dry. <clears throat> All right. Now let's try one of these nice plump ones from the shiny baking sheet. Mmm. Yeah, it's quite good, quite good. Alrighty, so as you can see, we've got the dozen from the silver sheet and the two, the single pair of cookies from the darker sheet. Now, don't get confused. These are flip-flop from the way the cookies were put out on the, the cooling sheets earlier. So over here on my left, your right, we've got the nice plump cookies that are on, that were, sorry, were cooked on the silver baking sheet. Over here, these flatter cookies, we're done on the darker baking sheet. So I'm thinking the moral of the story is that the darker baking sheet is going to produce flatter, therefore drier, more cooked, overcooked cookies if I continue to use it at the same temperature that I do uh, for the silver sheet. I personally usually end up, <laughs> not usually, always end up eating the cookies with chocolate milk. And so I'm actually going to do that right now. So. All right, now dipping a cookie in milk is fine and dandy for, for some people who like doing that. But for me, that doesn't put nearly enough of the liquid, in my case, chocolate milk, because I don't like the taste of plain milk, even when it's diluted by cookie taste. If it's diluted by, you know, say cereal or chocolate milk mix, then great. But otherwise, no, I don't like the taste of milk. So um, I do like chocolate milk. Anyway, getting back to what I was trying to say earlier before the rabbit trail, I don't remember what that was, so I'll start over. What I like to do is to take bits of the cookie and 
dunk them in the chocolate milk because that is delicious. And then it soaks up more chocolate milk, obviously. But then also you get a nice big enough spoon and you get more chocolate milk around the cookie that it's just kind of floating in. And that's just delicious. If you haven't tried it, you need to try it. If you have tried it, you need to try it again. So I just showed you me dunking my nice plump silver baking sheet cookie into the chocolate milk. Now, this flat, dry, overdone cookie from the darker baking sheet, I have yet to eat with the chocolate milk. Let's see. Did I mention you should try this? Because you should try this, if you haven't tried it. If you have tried it, you should try it again. So the crunchiness, that dryness, the kind of overbaked nature of the cookies from the dark baking sheet does come through even after having been dunked in the chocolate milk. Would that keep me from doing that? Namely from eating the slightly dry, slightly flat, slightly overdone cookies with the chocolate milk? No. But it is a more enjoyable experience when I have the more plump, moist cookies that are more kind of gooey and straight out of the oven and perfect the way you want cookies to be. That is a more enjoyable experience when you break those up and put those pieces in the chocolate milk. Um, so even the way that I tend to eat cookies at home, it is nicer and a more pleasant experience to have a cookies that are done better, more, you know, close to perfection and not dry, not overdone, not too flat, that type of thing. So at this point, I'm thinking if I'm just making a batch of cookies for myself at home, I'll probably just throw in two dozen cookies at once, a dozen on the silver sheet, a dozen on the dark sheet. And, you know, if some are overdone and a little flat, then who cares? It's just me eating them. If I want to present them to somebody, give them as a gift, then I'm probably going to take the extra time and only cook a dozen cookies at once per baking cycle. Just use the silver sheet and that way I know that the cookies are going to be a lot more moist, a lot more plump, um, a lot closer to what I personally would like an ideal cookie to be. So, um, yet again, uh, the, the experience process and learning process continues. So hopefully you learned something from it. Um, if not, hopefully you're at least entertained. If not, why in the world did you just waste all this time watching this video? So any questions, comments, thoughts, anything like that, put them in the comments. And if you liked the video, please give it a thumbs up. If you didn't like the video, uh, please go watch a different video. Maybe you'll like that one. Talk to you later. See you next time. Bye. All right, here is the making of peanut butter cookies. And here's my little clapper. Things aren't just washed out. Okay. Clapper. <sighs> Red leather, yellow leather. Okay. 
think the blooper reel is going to be longer than the actual video. <clears throat> so this time I thought I'd actually show you how I make the videos. So this time I think... Yes, my iPhone battery is low again. That's why I've got it all plugged in here. Because so I don't want another fiasco like last time when my iPhone battery ran out and died and I freaked out. And thankfully it turned out okay. So I totally freaking forgot how much of the dough that I want to put in each cookie. And of course, I didn't write it down on the recipe that I drew up for myself. So I have to go back to my YouTube channel and look it up. So this cookie walks up to this juice stand. The guy running the sand stand says, um, Just love having a cold. <laughs> I cough all over the cookie dough. Don't worry, it gets cooked. All the germs die. And while those two things are going on, parchment paper is amazing. So I'm going to use parchment paper. And, um, I don't know, I, I, I lost my train of, I don't know, I'm, I'm just going to do stuff. <clears throat> so, I'm going to, however, take one of them out before the other one, such that the cookie cooking times on the cookies, cookie cookie times, cooking, cookie cookie times, cooking of the cookie times, cookie. Cookie times. I like cookie times. So cookie time, cooking cookie. Parchment paper, you're amazing. Parchment paper, I love you. Parchment paper, I do. Okay, so I of course forgot to write down whatever amount of cookie dough I'm using per cookie, and I don't remember. So I have to yet again go to my YouTube channel, look up in the description of the last peanut butter cookie video I made how much dough I'm putting in each cookie. So I'll do that real quick and be right back. I uh, kept the same volume, same amount of cookie dough per cookie, about one and three quarters tablespoons. Um, okay, and one and three quarters tablespoons. Tried, um, by this time, I kind of thought that maybe I was pushing um, the... Okay, thank you. One. Three. 
three quarter tablespoon dough per cookie. Oh goodness, I can't stabilize the index card. So a little known fact is that in college, not only did I major in biology and minor in biomedical sciences, I also had a minor in I also had a minor I also had a minor from the Department of Repetition Department. My, what's in that strange brew he's drinking? Well, that's Lady Grey tea. It's Earl Grey tea with a hint of citrus. Mmm, citrus. Earl Grey tea. Earl Grey tea. Something, 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 something. Lady Grey tea has citrus. Earl Grey tea. Earl Grey tea. <laughs> She sells seashells by the seashore. Sally sells seashores by the seashore. Shall we sell seashells by the shore of the sea? Of the sea. So, so shore, shore, sea. She sells shore, so shore, so shore. Rubber baby buggy bumpers. Rubber baby buggy bumpers. No unique, unique. Unique, unique. New York. New York. Unique, New York. Unique, New York. Unique New York, 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 unique New York. Ha! Toy boat. 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 Peter Piper picked a peck of pickled peppers. How much wood could a woodchuck chuck if woodchuck could chuck woodchuck chuck? Snowsberries. 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 Yum. Washing my hands in the bosom of Abraham. Washing my hands in the bosom of Abraham. Washing my hands in the bosom of Abraham. Oh, washing my hands. Oh no, it's just the worst. You just you don't want you just don't don't eat right eggs here. But. Oh, washing my hands in the bosom of Abraham. Washing my hands in the bosom of Abraham. Washing my hands in the bosom of Abraham. Oh, washing my hands. The final cookie product. If I ever have a band going to be named that. I wash my hands in the bosom of Abraham, wash my hands in the bosom of Abraham, wash my hands in the bosom of Abraham, oh, wash my hands. I tell you, there ain't nothing like watching cookies bake. I reckon my approximation is somewhere between watching grass grow and watching paint dry. Oh, 
So I just show you to. Oh, blah, 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 blah. All right, let's try doing another clapper. See if that assists in syncing the video or the audio. Well, video and audio together because it's two different things. False start, false start, that wasn't it, that wasn't the real deal. Wait, stop, go back. Okay, I like that angle. Yeah, I like that angle, okay. 